Yes, folks, welcome back to another episode of the Bishy P podcast. We have been on a slight holiday the past couple of weeks um, as the assessments are in full flow, but we are back uh, with such a tremendous guest. Joining us on episode 42, we are joined by Glasgow Warriors, Scottish internationalist, and most recently uh, British and Irish line select, Xander Fagerson. Xander, how are you doing, mate? Thank you very much for joining us. Very well, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. Looking forward to getting, getting chatting. Superb. Um, we are also joined by two of our S5 sports captains and higher P pupil students, uh, Ben Trader and Jack McCallum. Gentlemen, how are you two doing? I'm doing good, Jack. Good, thank you. Jack, your, your, uh, your revision will be in full flow, son, with your assessment on Friday. Aye. Aye. That's exactly what it is. Ben, Ben's got his feet up now. He's, he's done his yeah, assessment. Me. <laughs> oh, no. Good luck, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going to kick us off, Sander. Um, obviously, like every guest, we, we like to get an insight of what your time was like at school. So, how did you find your school career? Did you stay on to kind of fourth, fifth, or sixth year? What was it like? Yeah, some of my favourite rugby memories were back at school. Um, so, yeah, I was a bit all over the place. I went to Glam's Primary um, up until Primary Three, the local primary school. And then I went to Dundee High School from primary three all the way up to fourth year. Um, so that's where I made the main, the main chunk, of, chunk of my rugby and where I got introduced to touch rugby until primary five, six, and then went to contact primary five and I just sort of fell in love with it then. And when the, when the teacher told us we can tackle each other and not get in trouble for it, I was like, this is the game for me. <laughs> I played football, wasn't very good at it. Had a wee dabble, um, quite lucky, the local ice rink used to be a bit ice hockey, had a dabble ice hockey. I love that too, but they're all a lot older than me and they'd absolutely batter me on ice. So <laughs> I felt rugby, guys my age, my size, yeah, let's give it a bash. I had a great time. And then in my last two years of school, I went to Strathallan School, got a scholarship there for rugby. I was really lucky that I bumped into Andy Henderson, who's the uh, DOR there. So yeah, um, some of my best times, um, my best rugby memories were at school. Just, I think, just playing with your mates and, and doing well and succeeding is uh, it's just awesome. And yeah. so, yeah, Strath was just a different level from Dundee High. Um, sort of an int- introduction to S&C and a bit more sort of a similar, uh, getting to the professional sort of level of stuff and analysis. So it was a great stepping stone from there into the academy. Um, so, yeah, absolutely love my school, rug- school rugby and I finished the whole six years. Um, and, yeah, loved it, absolutely loved it. Did you have any favourite subjects of that when, when you were at either school? Um, I absolutely loved PE, of course, but funny enough, I didn't actually do PE. Um, I love, I've, I've always loved maths. I, I love numbers. Um, I couldn't stand English. Like Critical essays for me were the bane of my life. <laughs> but um, yeah, oh, I'll give you a great example of my English lesson. Um, we, had, we were doing a critical essay and one of the boys in my class one of my good mates, he, um, he tipexed his nails instead of doing his essay. And so when she came out to collect all the essays, he had these perfectly painted white nails. And I was like, <laughs> what are you playing at? But that was the sort of level of English we were at. Um, but yeah, maths, I love physics and that sort of engineering side of things. Um, if I hadn't done rugby, I was wanting to do prosthetics, so fake limbs and um, orthotics and stuff like that. So um, I really enjoyed that sort of learning about how things work and, and crunch the numbers to make them better. Um, but yeah, that, that plus rugby was uh, probably my main my, my main focuses. Superb. I think it's over to one of the boys. The next question. Oh, um, so see when you were like getting into rugby or what, was it just for the school or was it, did you play for a club as well when you were younger? Um, so I'm a Christian, so grew up in a Christian home, so I wasn't allowed to play club, club rugby because it was on a Sunday. Ah. Um, so yeah, so I didn't play for any clubs, so I only played for school. I did, however, play at Strathallan, the rugby stops after Christmas. So I joined up with Howe Fife um, over in uh, Cooper. And so I played I played there for the twos a few games. Um, but yeah, m- mainly the bulk of it was at school. Um, yeah, it was an ongoing fight with my dad um, most weeks, but it turned out all right. So I always said to him it's going to hinder my career and I won't get opportunities because of it. So he still laughs to this day that it's all turned out all right. Was there a sorry? Was there a, was there a family background that, that took you down the rugby pathway, or was it just the experience of it that, that got you into it? Yeah, so my grandfather was the chaplain I ran at school um, for yeah. I can't remember how long, and so he actually um, he taught Tom Smith, 
the famous loose head prop in British and Irish line as well. But yeah, so, so dad played, my uncle played, and they all went to Rannick school, and that's where they fell in love with rugby. Yeah. So growing up, we'd always watch the Six Nations, we'd always watch when Scotland played. Um, and then in later life, sort of 14, 15, I was always watching the Glasgow games too. So um, yeah, it was, it was always quite cool to to watch Glasgow growing up, and especially against Edinburgh in the 1872 Cup at Christmas or on Boxing Day. And then to be actually playing these fixtures now, it's quite surreal. Um, so yeah, I went, wasn't it just rugby, kind of mum and dad were really great as, as we're grandma and grandpa, picking us into all sorts of sports. Um, we're from and um, so there's not much to do. So I was also a big mountain biker. So they uh, were really good at making sure they didn't push us down anything we didn't want to do. And when we found the thing that we did want to really go for, um, they fully backed us. And so I'm one of five brothers, so there was always someone to, to tackle in the garden or play football with. Yeah, actually, did you know become a, a mountain biking champion? Is that correct? I was all right back in the day, a few <laughs> kilos lighter. Um, everyone seems to say, oh, you would have been the best at it because you're the heaviest. But that was actually a massive disadvantage because you have to go in and out of trees and, and jumps and stuff. And so, uh, yeah, I did all right. I managed to win the Scottish Champs at under under 16. So I'll hang my hat on that one. And I'd love to go back to do that after rugby. But due to contract stuff and not getting injured, it's kind of a no-go for us now. And would you, would you go back to the choir singing, which I believe you were involved in when you were younger? Would you go back to that? <laughs> yeah, you, you've done your you've done your homework. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I would. No, I I love singing to the kids um, oh, for, yeah. their, for their ears only for, for bedtime. Um, <laughs> but no, my, my the musical gene passed on a few generations to my other little brother. He's actually a musical scholar at Saint Andrew's Uni. Wow, um, he's very good. But I sort of when I sort of hit puberty and uh, developed, my voice didn't really follow. So <laughs> I'm not bad, but I'm not as good as I used to be. Um, that angelic choir boy is, is no more. But are we, are we, ben, I think you'll get the next question. Oh. Uh, when you were me and Jack's age, did you have any part-time jobs or any that developed or think you developed uh, your professional career? How old are you, Jack? Uh, I'm 17. And how old are you, Ben? 17 as well. 17, yeah. No, actually, my main job, I did a little bit of um, stuff on the farm and stuff with a few mates of mine. Because where we're from and that sort of thing to do, um, I got offered the Tati Rogan, but I turned that down. I couldn't, I couldn't be bothered to put my, put my back through that. Um, but no, I worked for my grandfather. So my grandfather was a ship sander, so he um, he's, a, he's from Peter Heed. I thought you were deed. So he's a deep sea f- fisherman, and uh, so he came up to it was Port Seaton Harbour, and so he would get out all the boats, all the equipment for fishing, and also he ran the prawn the prawn business. So. Every summer from when I was 14 to 16, I would uh, go up and help him. So pretty much uh, an, a t- typical day would be up at five along to the harbour. I was working with a, with a great guy called Tom Thompson, who was an ex-policeman. And he, he, was, he had the perfect hands for picking up the prawn, the prawn boxes because he had two, two ruptured tendons. So they didn't actually straighten. So he was already hooking the box before I could grab it. And um, it's quite funny enough, he was actually Sam Thompson, who played for the Warriors as well recently. It was his grandfather. It's a small world, but um, I'd, be, I'd be with him at six o'clock in the morning in the harbour. You'd go onto the boats, you'd pick up the the fishermen would put the, the prawns in shape and then, sorry, in, in size order in each box, there'd be a large box of prawns, a small box, and like medium boxes. And you'd, you'd take the boxes of prawns off the boat, take them to the prawn shed, weigh them, and then you'd weigh how many were in a kilo um, just to make sure. Um, and then, then you sort of work out your price from that, write it all down, put them into the freezer and then the, the lorry would come about two o'clock, three o'clock in the afternoon and uh, take all the boxes away. So we, we sometimes on, on a good day, we'd be 200 boxes. So it was proper hard graft. And at 14, it was, it was quite a great introduction to the big bad world. Um, but yeah, I got, you, you got paid. I got paid well to uh, help me um, help keep my love of bikes going, paying for all the mechanics and broken parts. But um, <laughs> no, definitely, I think lifting the boxes range from sort of, yeah, 10 kilos to 25 kilos. So that heavy lifting, I think, definitely helped me with my size and stuff. Um, and it, after doing that for a summer, going to back to rugby, was I could chuck up the lighter guys a lot easier than uh, it was before. Stuff. Uh, how, would, how would you say your professional career has been like so far? Yeah, it's, it's been pretty good. Um, yeah, it's, it's not been without its troubles. Um, so I, saw, uh, I, I left school and didn't get a contract straight out of school. Um, compared to some of my other teammates, and um, 
yeah, I came through to Glasgow. I got told, I actually, knew, this is a funny story. I actually knew I went to New Zealand for a gap year. I was going to do um, mountain biking and skiing for the whole year. And uh, one of the coaches said to me, if you want to give the rugby a proper go, give me, give, me a, give me a year, but you need to come through to Glasgow, Edinburgh. So my girlfriend at the time, now wife, um, she was going back to stay with her family in Glasgow. So I thought, you know what? We'll go through there. Be close to her. Happy days. And so came through, played for Glasgow Hawks twos. And uh, yeah, no, it was quite tough from there. Um, sort of coming out of school, being one of the bigger guys and finding rugby quite easy and sort of that I moved position when I was 16 from number eight to prop. So um, I wasn't I wasn't fast enough or tall enough to try and make it pro at number eight. So they said, you're quite big, you can push not bad. So I would go at the front row, happy days. And so, uh, yeah, that sort of learning curve was, was massive for me, coming through, defending for my own, um, living with one of the other lads from the rugby club. Um, which, so yeah, I had to grow up pretty quick. Went to college. To redo my hires because I didn't work hard enough and didn't get good enough grades. Um, so yeah, sort of it was a great introduction to adult life and pro rugby because I was juggling college work, going to Hawks training as well as tra- training with the academy and training with um, with all the other under eighteen sort of groups. So yeah, yeah, it's 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 been awesome. It's been absolutely incredible and it's gone beyond my, my wildest dreams. Like being a British and Irish, being selected for the British and Irish Lions is just it's a, it's a childhood dream come true. So. Um, yeah, I'm nowhere near the finished article. I've got a lot more goals I'd like to hit. Um, but yeah, now nah, I feel like I'm, I'm getting there and if I keep working hard and keep my feet on the ground, I think I can get there. Xander, just, just going back to your, your Glasgow Hawk days, um, I believe our poor uh, rugby coach, Mark Mooney, was involved at the setup there. You maybe don't remember him, but I've been quoted and he's asked me to ask this question. I'll tell you this. But he apparently says that your brother, Matt, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, your brother Matt is by far faster, fitter, and more skilled than you. No, I, don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't no, know much, I don't know much he's paying him to say that, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it'll not be much knowing Matt. It'll not be much. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, no, nah, he's 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 fitter, um, <laughs> he's definitely faster. But I'd say I'm better looking, stronger, and everything else. So that's fine. Got better partner as well. So I think I win on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that Miles. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Jack, back next to you. Time Mark, next time I see Mark, I'll have a wee word. <laughs> <laughs> um, so obviously playing with uh, with Scotland and the Warriors, you've played with some some pretty decent players. So who do you think that the best player you've played with and against has, has been? Um, great question. I think the best player I've ever played with and the guy that I have the utmost respect for is two guys and they're, they're not the guys you think, you know. Um, there's Hoggy and stuff who can, post, can do some amazing things and quality player. And Nico Matuala who could, yeah, he, he does stuff that it's just, him and Leone are sort of, it's just crazy what some of the stuff they pull off. But for me, coming to the Warriors and seeing how hard they work day in, day out and seeing the amount of like, so we get like a stat sheet after every game and seeing some of the stats that these guys produce week in, week out consistently at the top of their game. Um, So Rob Harley, who's just got his 250th game, which is incredible at 30, you know, that that is a lot of, he's put his body through a lot of damage to get to that level, you know, and to be able to perform at that level and not get injured. And also Johnny Gray, you know, those two for me are just the epitome of what the Warriors uh, want to be and um, yeah, just a, a true warrior, you know, that work rate, humble, hardworking, and just always g- give their all no matter who they're playing for and, and when. But the best player I've played against, poor. Oh, that's a tough one as well. Mm, played against the All Blacks, so that was pretty cool. So I think, I think, Dan, I think Dan Carter played that day. Did he? No, he did. Well, playing the All Blacks, yeah, I was playing the All Blacks, pretty surreal. Um, I, I had to get knocked out by Sonny Bill's shoulder. It was a, a cheap shot. Didn't wrap his arms as always. <laughs> rugby league knocked me out uh, half, but just before half time. So I don't remember the rest of it. But playing against the All Blacks, pretty special. See, see, just on that, Sandra, like how in terms of the, the mental approach for that. Like these are obviously guys that it's a kind of tradition that you've looked up to in terms of this is the All Blacks. How how do you prepare for that? Do you need to put that sort of aspect to one side and just think they're rugby players? Yeah, I think 
in my younger years, I used to put so much pressure on myself, you know. And um, yeah, you'd sort of be, you'd, you'd be looking at their stats and how they've gone this season, you know, go, oh, this guy's a great player, he's playing amazing. Yeah. Sort of big them up in your head. And it's all about what they were doing. And then if, I think sometimes you forget, if you think about all, all about what they're doing, you forget what you're good at. You forget your strengths. And mm -hmm. the way I think definitely with age, I've got a lot better at it. But if I'm, if I know my role and I make my tackles and I have fun and I enjoy myself, that's going to bring the best out of me. And I think sometimes you can try and problem solve too much. Rugby is a team, a team game. You can't, one individual will definitely help the cause, but it won't be the deciding factor, you know. Yeah. Um, if one person misses a tackle, there's going to be other guys come and help help make that tackle, you know. Um, so it's not an individual sport. So I, I think putting all that pressure on myself had a, ne a negative effect. And so as, as I was saying, with, with age and with growing up with the kids and stuff, rugby for me isn't the be-all and end-all. I love it. It's my job. I want to play <clears throat> at the highest level. I want to be the best I can be. Um, but at the same time, when I come home, I'm a dad, I'm a brother, I'm a, I'm a husband, you know, so for me, that gave me great clarity and it makes me enjoy my, my rugby even more yeah. because it won't be the defining reason of who I am, but it can, it, but I also absolutely love it. If I didn't love it, I wouldn't be playing well and I they definitely feel that when, I, when I'm happy and enjoy my rugby, having a laugh, that's definitely when, I, I, I laugh as in focused, but smiling, that's when the, I play my best rugby. So it was quite a reality check for me. Um, all, all this sort of stuff came on after the World Cup but yeah, it's, it's been working so far, so I'll keep doing what I'm doing. Right. Just uh, that leads us kind of nicely on to the, to the next question. In, in, in recent years, you've had a number of highlights in your career. Is there any particular highlights um, that you, you take from your professional career that really stand out for you? Um, get my first cap. Playing with my brother for his first cap, that was a really special day for me and the family and also sort of our first game for Warriors together as well, which was really special. Um I think beating England down there for the Cup Cup 2021, that was a really special day, you know. Um, I think having last season Six Nations was awesome. I'm really lucky that the, the group I'm, I'm playing with at the moment are just such a great bunch of boys. We're all really tight and it's just, yeah, it's a privilege every time you pull on a Scotland jersey, but to play with this group, you know, I'm absolutely loving it. Um, and you can see that in our results coming through and the smiles on their faces. Um, so to be able to go to England and get that result was just was just massive for us. And yeah, a really special day for me. Um, and yeah, just being out in the Lions tour was just massive for me and my family and yeah. all those sacrifices, especially for my parents. Um, Skirmir is not really in the central belt, so travelling miles for doing all the all the trips for us, the specialist skills and scrum club and, and gym sessions just was all worth it. So yeah, just got to put, 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 put my best foot forward and do them proud this summer and hopefully get the test team. Superb. Um, like everything, those and those highlights, there's also low points. Has there been any difficult periods throughout your career where it's been a bit of a setback and you've had to kind of come back from and, and bounce back? <clears throat> yeah, the biggest one in my career, um, just before the World Cup, I snapped my ankle over in South Africa, did a dislocation fracture um, of my ankle, um, was out of the game for five months, and my wife had just fallen pregnant with our, with our first child. So yeah, it was a really tough reality check for me. Um, I think I put so much pressure on myself coming back to play my best rugby straight away from the injury that when I got back, I wasn't enjoying rugby whatsoever. Um, I was in quite a bad men mental spot um, and I was taking stuff home, you know, and when you, when you bring your work home, it's never good. So, yeah, I think I went to the World Cup with the ambition. I set myself the goal of starting the first game against Ireland and uh, I wasn't even in the, 24, in, the, in the 23 for the first game because I hadn't played that well the week before and before we left played Georgia and I got my first start um, before the tournament kicked off and I just remember thinking oh I'm going to have a best game you know and I, I read some stuff and um, was it just wasn't in a good, good head spot and tried yeah. to compensate that and try and make up for that. And yeah, I had an absolute shocker. Didn't play in the Ireland game. And it was just, yeah, really, really dark time. I remember calling Yaz yeah, end of the first so, couple of weeks in Japan saying, I just want to come home. Just really not enjoying this at all, you know. And she says, Yaz yeah, was, my wife was massive for me, you know, sort of said, um, just get back to what, why do you play rugby? What, why do you enjoy it? You know, think about when you started playing, what, what put a smile on your face? You know, that's playing with your mates and having a laugh and having fun. So 
and then changed my role. My, my, my role in the World Cup wasn't to to play the start. It was to help the guys who were getting played and help them prepare as much as I can. And I felt all I said was, if I get an opportunity, I'm just going to take it with both hands and just really enjoy it, you know, because there's some players that don't ever get to a World Cup. And I was really lucky that I got there and I'd come back from injury early to make sure I got there. So um, I got my game against Samoa off the bench and then I started against Russia then off the bench against Japan. So I played the last three um, and my wife and my, my little girl came over and with her family. And yeah, it was it was really, really funny because at the start of the trip, I was really, yeah, it was it was the worst trip ever. I didn't want to be here at all. And by the end, I was like, this is, this is awesome. You know, seeing, spend time with my family and I've got some great memories of Japan because of it. So um, yeah, that, that, that definitely was a low point in my career, but one that I definitely think is going to be the making of me. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting and quite fascinating the fact that you were so open in your reflection about that um, and yeah. how that sort of helped you move forward in a way. Yeah, massively. I think, especially with all sport, you know, if it doesn't, if you lose a game, um, as I was saying, it's not an individual um, sport, so you definitely can contribute. But I used to come home after games and beat myself up, you know, that I've, I've let my family down, I've let my team down. I've, I've got a scrum pen against me, you know, I was in a really dark place, you know, for maybe that weekend and I was sort of dreading going back to work because I sort of didn't want to get called out, you know, compared to if you actually own the situation, put your hand up and say, you know what, like I'm human, I made a mistake, yeah. but I'll work with it. If you don't learn, if you, you learn from your mistakes, it's not, it's not a wasted game. If you come away from a loss, you don't analyse it, you don't review it and you don't learn from it, that, that sort of wasted game. So I definitely feel that growth in my game and, the way I look at the way I, the way I look at rugby is definitely definitely growing from there. Yeah, interesting. Uh, next question, I think it's Ben. Uh, yeah, obviously rugby teams are quite well known for having pretty crazy initiations and pranks and stuff. Uh, do you have any funny stories for us? They're obviously family friendly. Um, yeah, uh, it's professional. Any initiations that, that you have? There's to really, do? there's really not. Um, <laughs> there's not really any uh, uh, warriors. At my previous clubs, I won't name names, but there was one court session which was quite funny and I was a young player coming through and we were down, down south somewhere and the court session was, um, it was fishermen themed, so you have to come in overalls and stuff or, or mermaids, whatever you wanted. And um, <laughs> one of the boys had, a, had like a, he bought a, um, he bought a fillet, a fillet of fish, like a proper a full fish uh, dead fish from about a week ago so it was like rotten it's stinking and he, if you, were, you spoke at a turn he come up behind you and slapped you across the face of the fish so I, 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 I didn't speak at a turn at all but I had some funny memories of boys boys absolutely stinking for about a week because of that fish hitting in the face um, <laughs> so yeah that, that's about it pretty much uh, brilliant, brilliant Jack back to you uh, so obviously as a, like a prop or a forward you're obviously training and preparation is different from the backs so do you have any like different preparation you do before games to get you in the right headspace to play the game? Uh, I like how you separated the backs and the forwards because the forwards do all the hard work and the backs look pretty. Not um, at all, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, preparation for me, the main ones are, because it's so upper body and I'm so like physically orientated, I, I do a lot of neck primers because in the front row, especially on a strong neck and, Making sure your your neck switched on for the impacts coming coming its way is pretty key, cru crucial. Um, got a nice little routine that I go through just to make sure a whole body warm up that I do every before every game. Um, incorpor incorporates everything and gets me going. Um, but rituals, ah, the only thing I do is that doesn't matter where I am. I've been doing it since I was fifteen. I always um, I always listen to DMX party up going into uh, going into the ground. You know, so how does how does that go? You want to get oh, it? <laughs> uh, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Yeah, I'll go. Mate, mate. Mate. Yeah, no, I just remember watching it from Like Mike when I was younger. And um, when he's in the car, I absolutely loved it. I thought it was so funny and so cool. So I listened to that song every time I walked into, into a ground. Are you, are you in charge of the, Who's in charge of the music? Oh, it usually varies. It's usually haste, though. So it's quite upbeat, techno sort of club stuff. Um. But yeah, I'm usually in charge of the gym for the forwards. So we've got a few a few different days, you know, heavy metal Tuesdays because we've got we've got scrums in the afternoon. So the boys need a bit a bit of a pick me up, you know. So a bit Metallica, a bit Iron Maiden, gets the boys going. Any guilty pleasures? Uh, 
I, I like a sing song. I, I love a bit of Celine Dion. So Celine Dion, <laughs> a bit of Fontella bass, you know, Rescue Me. I, I've got I've got a whole bunch of sing along, so it's good. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Um, obviously, most recently the, the, the Scottish side were in the Six Nations campaign. Um, a bit of a mixed bag, some incredible results, and then obviously some, I, I assume, some disappointing results. How, on a personal level, did you find that campaign? And then, kind of, as a collectively, as a team, how how did you find it? Um, yeah, I love the campaign. Um, I always love playing for Scotland, and so, so it's always a privilege and an honour, um, especially in these uncertain times. You know, playing any sort of rugby is just yeah, you have to enjoy it and make the most of it because there's other people who who aren't getting that privilege. You know, um, but no, yeah, I absolutely loved it. Don't get me wrong, the red card was really tough, and being banned for four games, uh, three games was yeah, it was pretty brutal in the whole disciplinary process, but. Um, yeah, as you say, you know, we had, we had some great highlights that wouldn't done in England, the one in France, and then Italy, you know, we really turned up for the Italy game. Um, but the Wales game was still, I think, so many missed opportunities. We should have beat them 100%. We were the better team, and I don't think my red card contributed to that. So, no. um, yeah, oh, it is what it is, you know, lost chances. Um, but we'll definitely learn from it, and I think Ireland as well. We were in the game, you know, we, we were in both games, it wasn't a white wash. Yeah. So, um, this, this is international rugby. Smallest of margins, you give a penalty away, they kick three points. Mm-hmm. You keep compounding errors, you know, they're going to get territory, get possession, get points on the board. So, um, yeah, w- we're getting there. We're not the finished article, but we're definitely improving every campaign and getting there. And I think the lessons we learned from all nations going into Six Nations, you can see some of the development in that. So we just need to keep working hard and keep developing. There seems to be a right kind of a core a core element to it, a right buzz around the around the team at the moment. Is that something that's replicated kind of inside the camp? Yeah, as I was saying, we're just um it's a really great group. Um got a really good balance of of old and young and everyone brings something different, but there's no there's sort of there's there's no cliques. Everyone's really open. And I think with, with COVID it's actually made us really tight because yeah. we're spending so much time together, we can't see our families. Um and I think if you can connect with someone off the pitch, when, you, when you're when you on the pitch, you know what makes them tick, you know what they play for, you know, that just only helps develop um, the bonds and, and helps you play better. So, um, yeah, it's just, as I was saying, I'm absolutely loving playing for Scotland and for Glasgow at the moment. And um, really, two really big family-orientated groups. And, yeah, absolutely loving it. Superb. Just just a kind of a question that came to my head there, um, Xander. We had uh, Greg Townsend join us very early on in our... Uh, in our podcast um, and I think we asked him the same question but I'd like, quite like to see it from a player point of view what, what's he like as a coach in terms of is he a shouter or is he cool calm and collected what's what's he like um, yeah Gregor's Gregor's a fantastic coach uh, he's, I've been very lucky that he gave me my first Glasgow cap um, I was my coach at Glasgow and then my coach at Scotland and now I'm going to be one of British National Lions tour with him. Yeah. So, yeah, I've got a lot of time for McGregor and to see him develop as a coach has been great to witness as well. Um, he definitely has developed as a coach. Um, I think he lets you know what he wants and he's not a shouty, shouty coach, but if you're out of line or you're not working hard enough, he will call you out in meetings and, and training, which is just keeping boys honest. Yeah. So, um, I've got a lot of time for that. So, yeah, no, nah, he definitely brings up the best in players and I think for me, he was really good for just making me work a bit harder and saying, oh, you get up here, can you work on the corner a bit harder? You're, you're a better option at this angle. And, and even stuff like ball carrying and stuff, you know, bouncing out and, and whatnot and analyse it down to, down to the small, smaller details. He's really good at picking up the finer details to make big changes for individuals, but then, which, which then makes big changes for the group. So, yes. yeah, great coach. Really lucky to work with him and uh, looking forward to working with him for, for the future. Yeah, certainly a, a top guy. He, told, he actually told us a story. I don't know if you 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 will not have heard our podcast with Xander, but he told us a story about his time in France, where his coach would headbutt, would headbutt all the players before they went out. Yeah, he did do that. I he did do that. <laughs> <laughs> I lost all his hair. No, <laughs> Brilliant, Ben. Glad to have you back, pal. No, I'm back. Thank I'm you. back. <laughs> Kick me out. Um, obviously, up next is British and Irish, Irish Lions Tour. Um, I'm sure you're pretty excited for that. Uh, what are the plans between now and then? Um, any preparations on the way? So, yeah, I think we're meet, meeting up as a squad um, some point next week. Um, I, I, the, 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 fi- the, the final details haven't come out yet. But yeah, so we're meeting up as a squad next week, get some more information and 
sort of um, get everything organised for that. And then actual camp camp act officially starts over in uh, Jersey on the 13th of June. So, yeah, um, exciting, really excited. But I've got a job to do first for Glasgow and to finish the season strong, you know. And we didn't start the Rainbow Cup the way we wanted to, losing to Treviso. And then the back-to-back Henry victories were massive. So building a little bit of momentum, but we've got the Dragons next and they've beat us three games out of three this year. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a tough game down, down in Wales. But as I said, finish strong for Glasgow and then I can shift my focus over to, to the Lions now. Yeah. Who would, you say, who would you say you're looking forward to playing with most there? That's not Scottish, obviously. Uh, a good question. That's a great question. Who am I? Um, give me one second. Am I cut out my back? Sorry. No, yes, um, I've always, I've always admired Ken Owens. He's, he's a bit like Robin Johnny. He, um, big workhorse, big heart, you know, and he's a physical player. So to be to play with him, not against him, would be, be, be nice. But uh, yeah, looking forward to just meet, looking forward to meet up with everyone, get to know everyone uh, on a personal level. Because I think when you play guys, you get a perception of them and. Uh, Take yeah. take Johan van der Merwe for example. He, he doesn't like Glasgow very much. So when he came to Scotland camp, I was a bit like, meh, meh, but he's actually a great guy. We got on really well. So um, we're good mates now. So when I play Edinburgh now, I just went, I wind him up. So yeah, looking forward to meeting everyone and having a laugh. Actually, some of the, the behind the scenes stuff and, and Sky Sports with some of the previous lines to us has been has been excellent. Um, so I'm hoping, hoping to see something very much similar this time around. Um, yes, of course. Just a, just a question on the call-up. How did you find out? So I found out um, when everyone else did on the squad announcement. Uh, right, the live stream, yeah, yeah. So, so there's, no, nothing, no one, there's, no no gets, like, yeah. there's no Microsoft Teams invite where you need RSVP or anything like that, no? No, nah, so I think three, two, two or three weeks before, they sent out emails that you had to respond if you could go on tour, if you what could is. sign up for that time away and stuff. and. I didn't really think anything of it at that time because in 2017, um, everyone got a letter um, if you were in the Six Nations squad just to make sure all the admin and all the all the forms and stuff were done. So I wasn't thinking too much into it. But yeah, so I've got the squad announcement and I found out with the team and I was with my little brother as well, which is pretty special. So yeah, it was just an absolute crazy time and all the boys slapping me on the back. You know, I had a lot of red hand marks on my back. So uh, yeah, it was great. Really? Jack, back to you with the trumpet. Uh, so, obviously, you're a very good rugby player. So, would you have any advice for any young rugby players or even just athletes in general? Um, yeah, work hard. Um, hard work always beats talent and talent doesn't work hard. Got told that at a young age and I didn't really believe it until it sunk in t- when I was about 19. Um, enjoy it. That's the best thing, as I said. You know, if you don't enjoy, enjoy the sport you're doing or... Um, yeah, you're not going to bring the best out of yourself. So, don't get me wrong. I still, I still get nervous, and I still, yeah, I still get nervous for games. But I just, yeah, got you play with a smile on your face. Otherwise, what's the point in doing it? I don't want to look back at my career and look at myself, and I'm, I'm miserable. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just, just be a sponge. You know, always be willing to learn. Always be trying to learn. So, sort of having that growth mindset, and I don't think you've cracked it because nine times out of ten, you probably haven't. Right. Um, that kind of leads us on nicely to the finishers, Xander. Uh, it's a little bit of a thinker, um, so good luck to you here. So, if you were to have a billboard with a particular quote or message on it, what would it read? I've probably just said it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think the talent, uh, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. That, that, for me, is what I'd probably hang my hat on, you know, I think in my younger years, especially at school, I left, I left school at 135 kilos. I was uh, I was a big boy, number eight. Bulk. I was I, was, I could bulk out maybe two or three times, but I wasn't very fit, you know. And that next year, I moved to Hawks, and they really worked on my fitness, and it's where I played some great rugby, and it's where I got my academy contract from. That so, um, yeah, I think being able to have multiple instances and being fit around the park as well as being able to hold down a scrum and lift and line up is keys for especially for a prop. So, um, but yeah, in every aspect, I, I use that. I I, I would branch that hard work into different aspects. You know, that's your analysis, that's your recovery, that's your S&C, that's your, the mental side of the game and also your preparation, uh, knowing your roles and your role knowledge. So um, I, I'd like to have loads of little branches off that on my billboard um, to make sure I t- tick all the boxes. But yeah, I think just 
that hard work, you know, pe- all the successful people in the world don't get there by chance. Um, so, yeah, look at look at sort of in the business world. Look at Elon Musk. You know, everyone thinks he's this crazy, he's this crazy billionaire, and he is crazy. But you know, he's wor- he, he worked sixteen hours a day for sixteen years to get there. You know, so um, there's there's always a backstory, and there's always a lot of hard work to get to, to get to the top. And I'm not, I'm not there yet, but hopefully one day I can get there. Absolutely. Just to, just before uh, we tie things up, just a question that came to me there. Life after rugby, where, where would you see? Would you go into a media sort of background? Would you go coaching or something else? So I'd like to do um, financial advising, something that I'm wow. quite interested in. I'm currently doing a diplomacy in that. So, um, yeah, I'm doing a, a diplomacy in financial advising and then we'll see where that goes. But, yeah, I'd, I'd love to coach as well and sort of give back to the younger generations. Um Maybe not a scrum guru because uh, I'd like to think I'm a better ball handler than Matt as well. So maybe it's a skills coach or something. Who knows? But as long as uh, the family's happy, well, I can go play some golf. That's all that matters. Ah, uh, so where'd you play offer? Uh, <laughs> I've, not, I've not played for about a year. I'm silent now. I'd say 14. I'd say 14. I've not played for a year, so. Uh, um, good man. Yeah, I, I'm moving house, so the clubs are, clubs are in storage, but. Yeah, I'll, I'll work on it and get it down and we can get a game sometimes. Give us a shout. We'll get, we'll get you along at Codders, Ander. That's where, that's where we'll head. Love to. Brilliant. Um, I'm all questioned out. Jack, Ben, I don't know if you've got any other questions you'd like to ask. Um, I just was going to say, in Glasgow, obviously, you play with your brother, but is there any like friendships that you've made at your time in Glasgow that you feel are really strong? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, yeah one of my best mates is Scott Cummings. So it's quite cool to be able to play with him, you know. It's quite funny. I actually, when he first came to Glasgow, I actually couldn't stand him. <laughs> I, won't, I won't go into the reasons, but yeah, nah, he, we just didn't really rub each other the right way. But as time's gone on, yeah, he's, he's one of my best mates and uh, I, lo- I love playing with him and I know how to get the best out of him. He knows he's got the best out of me. And uh, he keeps you honest. Who else? I love playing with Fraser Brown. He's another guy similar to, to uh, Rob and Johnny, you know. Always puts his body on the line. That's usually why he's mainly injured. Um, but yeah, no, just an absolute warrior. And uh, got, I've got a lot of time for that, as you, as you can probably tell. Um, who else? I played with Hasto the whole way, the whole way through age grades and stuff. And he's gone from the quiet guy with a terrible haircut to he's got a new fade every week and he's got blonde highlights. So uh, it's quite special playing with Hasto and I'm, I'm going to miss him when he goes. But I know he's uh, he's going down there with a big bag of cash, so he'll be absolutely fine. <laughs> Um, Xander, thank you so much uh, for your time this evening. Uh, we really do appreciate it. I know you've got kind of family duties uh, as well as your rugby duties, so we really do appreciate you taking time out for us tonight. So thank you. No worries, John and Ben and Jack. Thank you very much for having me. And, uh, really appreciate thank it. You. And, uh, all the best with exams. And uh, yes. yeah, let's get you to a Glasgow game when all the fans are back. Sounds good. Okay. Jack, Ben, thank you very much. Gents, done a, a really smashing job. Um, so very well done remember folks to check out this episode and all our other episodes on our YouTube channel and Spotify channel uh, the Bishy P podcast other than that folks take care and see you all later